Today, I'm gonna break a cardinal sin of tech YouTube. I'm gonna have fun building a computer. There's no specific budget, I'm not trying to answer any question, or even teach you anything. I just want to enjoy building a computer with some random parts I have lying around. And a Ryzen 5 1600AF and some Asia Horse fans sent out by a Mr. Warman. This video started off on a great foot when it took me about half an hour to find the rear I.O. shield for this motherboard. Uh, partly because I'm a bit of a pig, um, I was looking in all of there and it actually ended up being under that motherboard over there for some reason. Uh, but we found it, so it means we can get started. I'm actually going to be a complete rebel here and not test the components first. Um, I've used the motherboard in a build before as you can see the CPU is new and the power supply is new But everything else I would have used before so if something is broken It'll be easy to diagnose it, but again always test your components at home kids But with that let's drop the CPU in here and get started When it comes to the CPU cooler, uh, this is the wrong cooler for the CPU that I have. This actually is the Spire that came with my 2700 that I've never used before and I haven't seen in builds regularly. So it's a bit more of a beefy cooler and I do what I want. Initially, I wanted to use that RAM kit under there, which is a 16 gig kit of 3200 megahertz. Uh, it's, it's a team group kit. It's very good value for money RAM, but the problem is it's under that cooler and it's going to be a huge pain in my butt to get out from under there. So do I not be lazy about it and use that RAM or do I use fancier high speed RAM? So the RAM that I'm using for this build is 16 gigs of Tradizzi 3600 megahertz. The power supply that I'm going to use for this video is a C650, which uh, NZXT sent over for this video. It's a 650 watt power supply that's 80 plus bronze rated and it's fully modular with some fairly decent looking cables. So I may not have to use braided extension cables, but I'll see how I feel later on in the video. NZXT is always really good with their packaging. They include this little, it looks like a toiletry bag for your uh, power supply cables. That's amazing, that's so convenient, especially for me that loses everything. Major hardware, I can't help but feel like that warning is there just for you. The case is one of my all time favorites. It's the MATX version of the Fractal Design Meshify C, which is gonna go very well with our little Asus board over there. So now let's drop in those Asia horse fans that Mr. Warman sent over. I think the white fan adds a nice contrast. One thing that I kind of hate about using new fans is that breaking the fan screw virginity is always like a full body workout. Now that I've pretty much thrown out my back pounding in these three fans, this is the airflow configuration that I'm going with. So I've got two intake fans and one exhaust so that we have some positive pressure in here. I thought about adding two more in the top, but yeah, then we may have a negative airflow situation and I'm not some kind of animal. With that, let's drop the motherboard in here and get this build going. With only a reasonable amount of struggling, I have the motherboard mounted in here. The main issue I had, as always, is the front USB 3 header cable thing. On the list of things that can die painful deaths in a fire, uh, that cable is very much at the top of that list. I actually had to pull the power supply out to be able to fit it through there and then struggle to get it in. Luckily, that was very convenient considering that little bracket. Uh, unscrewing two captive thumb screws is significantly more convenient than having to deal with four non-captive screws. Uh, yeah, so now let's drop the graphics card in here and see how she runs.
Here it is. This is the final product. I haven't actually switched it on yet. I don't know that it works, but it, it should work. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. Uh, we're going to pretend like the back doesn't exist because that's what I usually do. I mean, if I can close the back side panel with not too much elbow grease, I consider it a job well done. As far as the cable management in the front, though, it doesn't look the best down here. But that's one of the beauties of MATX is that it's kind of hidden a little bit. There wasn't a closer spot to bring the front IO stuff through. Uh, but yeah, you're not really going to see that too much. The other cable management issue I have is with some RGB. This cooler does actually light up in RGB and you can control it if you plug it in. Uh, but then there's another cable that you have to deal with. These fans look really good. I'm excited to see what they look like lit up. So let's fire this bad boy up, see what it looks like, and then do some benchmarks. It turned into a little bit of a neon looking thing. Um, basically, long story short, it wasn't intentional, but I kind of like the way it looks. I think it looks really cool. Now, as far as the building process goes, I've already kind of told you everything about it. When it came to installing Windows, it was very fast. Although, the more eagle-eyed of you would probably have noticed that I've got different RAM in there because the system refused to overclock the G-Skill uh, Tradizies that I had in there before, anything above 2133 megahertz. And then I put the Corsair kit in there and it just clocked straight to 3.6 gigahertz on the memory. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like this 1600 AF is still a bit finicky with what RAM it'll clock very high with. Now, when it comes to overclocking the little Ryzen 5 1600 AF, I was really excited because I thought I was going to be able to throttle its neck a little bit, considering that we have the bigger stock Ryzen cooler on there. But yeah, it didn't really go as well as I expected because clocking it anywhere above 4 gigahertz, I needed to crank the voltages, which then meant that the cooler couldn't handle it. In fact, when it comes to thermally very demanding tests like IDA64, at 4 GHz, I had to run it at 1.343 volts, which meant that it was stable. But at that voltage, the cooler couldn't handle it, and then the system would shut down, as you can see from this warning. And then when I dropped it just one point lower to 1.337, then thermally the cooler seemed to be able to kind of handle it but then the test would just crash because it can't maintain four gigahertz with that voltage now when it came to gaming i could easily get four gigahertz at 1.343 volts it worked fine temperatures were okay but again gaming isn't the most thermally intensive cpu application so when it comes to productivity you really need to slap a beefier cooler on here to be able to get those higher 4.1 gigahertz overclocks around there with that let's have a look at the gaming benchmarks to see how well the 1600 af and the rtx 2060 play together And as you can see, they work really well together. The system actually performs very nicely at 1080p, and I think you would be very happy with its gaming performance at that resolution. You could get a higher end CPU to pair with the RTX 2060, but honestly, I, I think it's fine. I don't think you need to be too bothered about that. And especially if you overclock the chip a bit more, you may get a little bit more gaming performance out of it, especially with that really fast RAM in there. Uh, I, I think that helps Ryzen a lot. 
Now, just a quick note on the gaming benchmarks. I did have a little bit of instability. I did have the occasional crash while running the benchmarks. I didn't have enough time to properly diagnose it because I spent a lot of time getting the chip to run at four gigahertz without setting itself on fire with this cooler. So it meant I didn't have more time when I started running the gaming benchmarks to actually properly get the stability down on the system. So you do have to dial it in a little bit. Um, but yeah, other than that, it ran very, very nicely. Thank you very much, Warman, for sending out these amazing looking fans with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. They're, they're a great combination. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I'll be streaming on my YouTube channel a bit later today, so check that out as well if you want. And until the next video, bye-bye.